Hey guys, Victor from Victor G Photography here, and today's video is actually going to be a little bit different than the normal modeling videos that I've posted on here before. Uh, this video is actually going to be of a wedding that I shot recently uh, in the Santa Cruz Mountains. It was a three-day wedding event, which was fantastic. It was at these campgrounds called the Kennelin uh, Campgrounds. I'll not exactly sure where they're located they're in the middle of nowhere but it took some really good behind the scenes video of everything that i was doing there i had my gopro mounted on my camera most of the time and i was able to get a lot of the shots so for this video i'm really going to be showing you a lot of the prep as well as the ceremony itself and just kind of what i do on my normal wedding days and also it'll give you a good idea of what you can do if you're starting out doing weddings and i will also talk to you about like my settings my ideas and why i decided to shoot certain things a certain way so check it out let me know what you think that I would do at every wedding is I'll that, grab all the rings, the dress, the flowers if they're available, the shoes, everything that I can for the small details just to get those shots out of the way. That way you don't have to worry about them later and that way I can focus on the bride and the groom and everybody that's involved in the wedding that day. Now you can see that I'm shooting with a bunch of crap behind me. I, it, trust me in the images they don't show up i'm shooting with my z6 with the nikon 105 macro lens with the 105 it creates such a very shallow depth of field that you don't see anything in the background at all now because of that i'm shooting at about 5.6 anything lower than that will really make it uh too shallow where everything in like as far as the rings will get very hard to focus so at 5.6 i find that it's a really good setting to have when shooting certain things like rings here you can see i just moved the rings onto the bouquet itself took a couple really cute photos it just blends in well with the flowers and i think i get some excellent shots that the bride and grooms really love Here I just have the dress set up on the ledge of the door. Really simple shots. Uh, the background gets completely blown out just to be able to show the highlights in the dress and the details. It comes out really nice. You can set it up anywhere. To be honest, I prefer to have it indoors, but you gotta do with what you got, and this was the best spot. Here's a little spot in the corner that I found that uh, actually worked out pretty good as far as taking some of the photos of the dress. After taking all the shots of the details that I liked, I figured it was about time to go bug the bride. She was getting ready in the adjacent room, getting her hair and makeup done. And uh, so I just decided to sneak in there and get some shots. You can see the florist and her bridesmaids putting in the last finishing touches of this beautiful flower garnish that went on the back of her head. And it looked absolutely amazing. It really made her hair really stand out. Well, here I can show you a photo of it real quick. Here. Head up just a little bit, Courtney. There you go. She was in the perfect position for me sitting at this mirror because she was writing her soon-to-be husband a love note for him to have before the wedding that I was going to deliver to him. And so I thought that the lighting was beautiful. I would take a couple photos with her with the mirror so I can get a little bit of her face and then also so that I can get uh, her writing and actually having a moment to herself. And the images that came from that were just absolutely beautiful. After she got all ready in her dress and everything, um, I had her come out into the room. And what I normally would do is I'll either step out of the room or I'll have them get changed in the other room and then they'll come in with the dress not fully enclosed. I will never stay in the room with the bride while she's getting dressed because, I mean, have some class. So I just took some photos while the mom was doing the finishing touches on the dress, zipping it up in the back. These shots are perfect. They are cherished and loved forever. The, the bride and the bride's mom usually are the ones to do it or the maid of honor. And these are shots that you always really want to get. Yeah. 
And here they are just having a little moment for themselves. You really want to get all the emotion that you can, especially with the bride's parents. Um, it's just a very emotional time for them as well as the bride. Right. Next up are the boys. Boys are a lot easier to shoot than girls. Trust me, they are. They get ready in like five minutes. Most of them, you know, they just throw on the suit and they're good to go. These guys have known each other for years and they've all been best friends and every week they have their own Dungeons and Dragons night and uh, I love it. They're all just family people. Um, none of them know how to do ties, of course. Most guys don't know how to do ties. I always figured that it was something that all of us should learn at a young age, but uh, surprisingly, as uh, many weddings as I've done, a lot of them just don't know how to do it. So either like so, uh, the father or even me ends up helping them kind of figuring out how to do their own ties. And then Groom had this coat on. that matched his vest with just this slight floral print on the Can inside and on the back bit? of the vest, which made a really good yeah, image. Go. Um, I liked it a lot. It looked really good to me. For the groom, what I wanted to do is get a couple shots of him just kind of getting ready. And sometimes when you're doing photos, uh, you have to kind of stage them a little bit. And so what I did is I had him stand in the doorway right here and just yeah. kind of no, pretend no, to put no, on the jacket, it, it, take it, it off, the button it up, look over to the side. Yeah, yeah, and while you're vest, staging these the kind of shots, they look the really good in the images because they look natural like he was doing them himself. But you're putting him in a great spot where light is just flowing in. Look off to the side. There you go, how you doing it? And now it's time for the wedding. They had uh, her sister-in-law actually playing piano for the ceremony, which I thought was very beautiful. And uh, as you can see, just from the venue itself, there was a lot of stairs leading down into the ceremony site. Now typically what I will do when I'm taking photos is I will be crouched down near the front pew um, just to not be in anybody's way but because they're coming from such a high angle I was actually able to stand up completely myself and get everybody as they were coming down the stairs. You're actually going to be seeing me flip the camera as far as portrait mode and landscape mode a lot during the service because you want to get as much variety as possible. Um, the portrait mode you get really full length bodies and then usually when I'm in landscape mode I'm able to crop it in a little bit tighter to get their facial expressions and more tighter on their bodies and faces as they're coming down the aisle. This one was actually a small wedding. They didn't have any bridesmaids or groomsmen. Everybody that you saw in the photos earlier, they were just there for emotional support, their friends and family, uh, all the guys, they became ushers. And uh, there was actually some stairs or parts of the stairs that were very slippery. And so you're gonna see them pointing out right here just to be careful because a few of the guests actually kind of slipped a little bit and nobody wanted to get hurt. It was actually pretty funny because every time somebody came down the stairs, they would point and be like, be careful, don't fall. Particular can be kind of hard to shoot, especially younger ones, because they don't like to follow rules when it comes to, uh, you know, walking down the straight line towards the front of the aisle. So they actually enlisted one of the parents to walk the ring bearers down with their little briefcases that had the rings in them to deliver to the best man and the maid of honor. And then you have the flower girl walking down the aisles. She was so cute, just throwing the petals on the floor like a proper flower girl should. Now once they all walk down the aisle, what I try to do is I take photos of the groom as the bride makes her first turn. That way you can get the first expressions of the groom as he's seeing her for the first time. This is incredibly important to do, especially if you aren't doing a first look because you want to be able to capture the first time that the groom is seeing the bride as she's coming down the aisle. And this bride was beautiful walking down the aisle with her father. She did a fantastic job walking down the stairs. Nobody got injured, so that is always a good thing. Um, especially when you're doing something outdoors, you really want to consider the kind of footwear that you're going to be wearing when you're doing that. A huge thing for me, especially for weddings, is to be unobtrusive and not seen by anybody. You can see me 
in the far backs of the weddings. I have, you know, the, the kind of lenses that are able to shoot from a good distance. I have my 70 to 200. Uh, I usually have my 105. You are being paid to photograph the wedding, not to be seen at the wedding. And so it is a big pet peeve of mine when I see a lot of photographers that are in everybody's way taking photos. I will walk behind everybody and onto the sides to be able to get the photos that I need and to be able to get the great expressions of everybody there. Um, it's just one of those things that I can't stress enough. Don't be in everybody's way to take photos of the bride and groom. I cut this wedding really short so that you guys won't have to log through all of the whole entire ceremony. But this is another very important thing. You see the officiant walking over to the side after he pronounces them husband and wife for their first kiss. I actually asked him to do that just so that I'd be able to get great photos of them by themselves making that first kiss and it just makes an incredible image. So anytime that you're doing a wedding, definitely ask the officiant to just step off to the side after they're pronounced. Alright guys, that's it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. It's a different kind of video. Like I said, it is a wedding. If you guys are interested, I can post more wedding videos. Uh, I have It's wedding season right now, so I'm shooting a lot of them over the weekends. Uh, if you guys are interested, yeah, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to, to try to edit and do some more up for you guys and just kind of give you an idea of how to shoot weddings if you're looking to get interested in that. I will definitely be posting more modeling videos soon. I have a couple on my backlog that I'm editing, but I'm going to get them out as soon as possible. So, like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.